straight right ain't going to mean me no good anyhow. Praise the Lord. And there the Bible says he sold his birthright for some beans and a drink. And the scripture said from then on he despised his birthright. And I'm thinking tonight as the Old Testament, uh, the birthright was a right for simply the firstborn. And in the New Testament, it changed a bit because in the New Testament, every person, whosoever will, can have a birthright. And the Old Testament, the birthright only pertained to your born family. And uh, it only pertained to benefits uh, as related to your birth family. Uh -huh. But in the New Testament, the birthright is for whosoever will let him come. Yes. And not only that, but it says in this birthright, the benefit is we are made partakers with God. Uh -huh. The benefit of the birthright in the New Testament is yes. we are joint heirs to the throne of God. Yes. The benefit in the New Testament of having a birthright is that God will supply all your needs. The benefit of a birthright in the New Testament is uh -huh. when you have been born again yes. and you have elected uh, the birthright from God. Uh -huh. Oh Lord, not only a benefit due to you, our Lord, uh, later on, yeah. but you have benefits right now. Yeah. Now I know that Nick Will is saying that serving the Lord will pay all that the while, yeah. but the reality is serving the Lord will pay off even right now. Yeah. Here in our text, Esau, right. who seemingly yeah. was at the point of death, yeah. oh Lord, uh, for something that was nobody's fault but his. Right. Nobody told him to go out in the field right. and stay gone all day. Oh Lord, either you got something or you don't. Yeah. But uh, he stayed until he felt he was at the point of death. Yeah. And sometimes in our lives, in this and bustle, we forget about our birthright. Yeah. We forget about what God has already promised right. to provide for us. Yeah. And while we're seeking, uh, we're getting further and farther away from what we yeah. really need. Yeah. And sometimes the devil mm -hmm. can offer us deals like what Jacob had offered Esau. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe it, you better read where when Jesus had fasted uh, 40 days uh -huh. and 40 nights. And the devil, the Bible says, came and tempted Jesus. Uh -huh. Oh Lord, and said to him that if you bow down uh -huh. and worship me, yeah. I'll give you the kingdom, uh, all these kingdoms of uh, the world. Yeah. And sometimes while we're going about doing what we want to do, instead of doing what God has called us to do, sometimes when we're separating ourselves from the service of God and from the word of God, the devil has an opportunity to whisper in our ear. Sometimes as we dibble and dabble, it gives the devil a means of creeping in and trying to make a deal with us. And I wish to God tonight that Esau has simply said it's not worth it. You know Jesus didn't say it in those words. But in essence what he says to the devil is it's not worth it. Because the kingdoms that you talk about giving me, first off they already belong to me. And if I obey you and don't obey the law, then I'm going to lose what the Lord wants me to have. And uh, whenever you decide to make 
to deal with the devil instead of walking in the way of God. You stand in danger of losing your birthright. You stand in danger of losing the ability to stand on the holy word of God. He says, Father, with what we're 